What's up guys? Today we're gonna dive deep in the hobo sexual revolution taking full effect and how this is changing America forever. But before we get in that, if you wanna learn how to do a corporation, create a holding company LLC, check out the link below and subscribe to my new channel, The Corporate Game. All right, so let's get into this hobo sexual content. As we know, everyone knows about the great resignation, resignation right? How all these people quit their jobs. But I was thinking tonight, I kind of crunched some numbers. It was like 4 million people quit their jobs in one month, right? I think the highest number on record. But how many people are actually working? So we're supposedly in this fake phantom economy have 160 million people in the workforce. So when you subtract 4 million from 160, that still leaves 156 million people working their job. Because I started to think, all right, you're a full-fledged adult or you're a married individual with young children. You have a house, apartment, you have a car, you have bills, you have obligations. And I'm just sitting there like, how many people are really quitting their jobs? And there's a lot of talk about the great resignation. Like, let's talk about the older generation of people who opted out of working and they just retired. So let's look at the, the profile of these people. They were older, more than likely they had a pension or they had uh, investments or they had a paid off house or they were close to social security. So these folks opted out of the workforce and moved into retirement, which is something they had been planning for decades. So I don't really think it was that many people who actually retired. So I started to dive into the numbers, right? Who are all these people quitting their jobs? And it was millennials. As you saw in the beginning, well, I'll, I'll put this up now. Right now, you have more young adults than ever living with their parents. These are the folks who were quitting their jobs because they didn't have a full array of bills. Because I was just sitting there like, all right, you know, I was just sitting there thinking, it's like, you're a married man or a married woman with two small children and I'll get, you're not just going to quit your job. Now, I, I ain't buying that. I'm not buying that. Because the average person, I think, is fairly responsible and the average person wouldn't do that. So I started diving and diving and I had to crunch my own numbers. And I was like, okay, 160 million people in the workforce, X amount of people retired. This 4 million, which seems so large when you compare and contrast it against the 160 million, it's really not that large. It's really not that large. It's an atypical event of so many people quitting. And I wanted to really dive into it. And a few years ago, I don't even remember, I will link it up here. I'll link it up here where you can check out the hobo sexual. I actually predicted this was coming. I did not predict the great resignation, but I did predict the hobo revolution because of what they were coming. Because once again, you know, I look at a lot of stuff and I knew the economy was melting down before the pandemic, before the pandemic. And once again, it is a ton of people who are living with mom and dad, who are back in their original bedroom, who are maybe in the basement of their parents' house. And these are full fledged adults who are living like teenagers. And I started to think about that. Teenagers, that's who quits their job without another job. This is something that young people will do. And I started to think, I was like, oh, okay, this is who's doing this. Now, all this has happened and it is happening, right? This is going to change America forever. It's going to change America forever because you know, earlier, as you saw, 
The Waltons. It was a show that was on television when I was a kid. And there was three generations of the Waltons living under roof. There was the great grandparents, there was mom and dad. There were the grandparents, mom and dad, and the children. So three generations. So you're going to see a redo of the Waltons all across America. And this ain't going away no time soon. You want to know one of the reasons that's driving this? The average housing price has reached $400,000. Now, that is very close to a jumbo loan. Uh, a few years ago, jumbo loan was like 450-ish. I don't know what it is today because these numbers have changed. But that's going to be a big driver. So when you take the raising of, well, let's go ahead and put this classification. Let's say, what is a good job? In my opinion, in my humble opinion, a good job is that one job that pays 125,000 a year. To me, that enters the territory of a good job. So we, we, that's what I'm gonna classify. Your ideal of a good job may be totally different. You know, put it in the comments. Let me know what your ideal of a good job is. And with those kind of jobs, this is why we had the HB1 visa because we don't have enough homegrown talent to get these jobs, right? So fully, out the 160 million people who are working, 80 million make $30,000 a year or less, which in comparison, in co you compare and contrast this to the average home price in America is now 400,000. 30,000 doesn't even get you close to that. Um, two people making 30,000, 60,000 doesn't even get you close to that. So we have a situation where, and once again, I don't think that housing prices are going to come down. I think they're going to stop appreciating. They may, but there might be a little flexibility, but as long as there is cheap money in the system, housing prices are not coming down. Not a lot. They may come down a little bit. They may budge, you know, like they were asking 430 and they came down to 420. You know, you might see that kind of action, but you're not going to see coming from 400 down to 250. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. There's just too much cheap money, too much cheap money. And as long now there is a word on the street that the Fed is going to raise interest rates next year, which is going to slow the number of people getting houses because the cheap money is about to get a little bit more expensive. But why do I say that the homosexual revolution is going to change America forever? All right, let's get into a little education. And you can, you know, um, research this. The longer that you're out of the job market and the longer you have reduced income, this impacts you for decades. This impacts you for decades, unless you do something like I did. Like, you know, I'll tell you the story if you don't know. Uh, when I was homeless and living in the boarding house, I actually lied and created my own reference and this got me the best job I've ever had to date because I did a little hustle dust and uh, I created my own reference and it actually worked. Uh, it was a little plan I called Scheme Incorporated. So I was able to go from minimum wage to below minimum wage to adjusted for inflation, a $65,000 a year job, just like that. So unless you're doing that kind of action, no. But if you're the average person with the average career trajectory, you being at home with the rents, with the parents, and you working DoorDash. If you will notice, DoorDash videos are extremely popular on YouTube. There's a guy, and I like to watch him because I think he's hilarious. His name is Nugs. And there's another guy, DoorDash, uh, Bitly Coop, DoorDash Diaries. And there, there's a ton of DoorDash content, tons. And a lot of it does really, really well. Why is there so much DoorDash content doing well? Because there's a lot of people doing DoorDash. There's a lot of people doing Instacart. There's a lot of people doing Uber. There's a lot of people doing Lyft. 
And uh, I was actually in a lift today and I was talking to the guy and he's getting ready because see, lift actually deactivated him and he had to fight his case. So what is happening in the lower social economic strata, the DoorDash, the Lyfts, the uh, Ubers, the Instacart, the roadies, all of these gig jobs. The longer you stay in the gig job, the longer that it impacts your long-term financial prospects for the future. So if you're working Uber and you're doing 2,500 a month, and there was a period where Uber and Lyft and DoorDash, these folks were making five to $9,000 a month. I knew that was only gonna be temporary because this was another a factor of the stimulus economy. This was an atypical blip that was caused by the stimulus economy. So this wasn't gonna keep going on and on and on. So I knew it was gonna peter out sooner or later. And interestingly enough, the stock market for the last four weeks has been going pretty bad. So as we swing from this phantom stimulus economy and we start to move back to the real economy based on real financial dynamics, you're gonna see a lot of economic pain. And this is why so many people have taken the role of a homo, homosexual. And if you don't know what a homosexual is, I should have defined that earlier. A homosexual, you know, really homosexual is a misclassification for the folks who are living on with their parents. Because a homosexual is someone who will move in with another single person and give up the goods because that's all they got to give up. So, you know, the tie's a little saucy because that's a misclassification because the people who are living with their parents are not homosexuals. They're just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say freeloaders, I would say failure to launch. If you're 34, 35 years old, living with mom and dad, I think you need to sit back and reevaluate a lot of your choices because, you know, aside if you got sick or something and they're taking care of you, that's completely different. But if you're perfectly healthy and perfectly capable, you know, so this is why this is gonna, this, this, these two pandemic years are gonna change America for the next 30 years. Because once a trend begins, and right now we have a significant trend, there's a lot of data, there's a lot of research of the number of people who are not living on their own. And this changes the mores, this changes the attitudes. Because let's say you're a person, you're living at home with your parents. You are not gonna look at another person living home with their parents as atypical or even bad. It's just like, hey, I'm doing it, they're doing it. So once you have a significant mass of people doing something, this creates a trend, this creates a wave, this creates a, a pool of activity. So you're not going to, it used to be, when I was coming up, folks couldn't wait to get out their parents' house. It's like, I'm 18, I'm gone. People could not wait. They would go out, get a little job, get an apartment, and be out their parents' house because they didn't want their parents to be lording over them. And what many of you who are still living at home with your parents, you're finding out that your parents are all up in your business because they're your parents. They love you, they care about you. So they want to know what you're doing. They want to know about your welfare. So they all up in your business. And if you are living with your parents and you're a full-fledged adult, how does that work when you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend and they want to spend the night? How does that work? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But this is what's going to happen because we have the revolution. Like the number of people. Well, let's go ahead and talk about this. Everyone doesn't have parents that they can stay with. So there's a number of people who are living that hobosexual lifestyle. And uh, men and women, and they're with someone they really don't want to be with because they need a place to stay. So once again, and th this, this, this is something that I've been observing and I've been talking because every time I get into a Lyft or an Uber, I ask them a bunch of questions because I know that if you're doing Uber for five or six years, 
your income isn't that good. And typically, let's take these 4 million people who quit their jobs and you know, some of them have gotten better jobs and some of them haven't and some of them are still unemployed. But each year that you have a reduced income, it impacts you five to 10 years in the future. So this is what I'm talking about, this, this movement, the great resignation, the great homosexual revolution is going to change America because it changes the morality isn't the exact word. It changes what's acceptable in America, what is acceptable in America. So one of the things that you will find out is that when people are in a relaxed, I need help mode, then they're less critical and less judgmental of someone else who's in a similar position because they know that pain. And since we have a lot of people who are 35 years old living with their parents, lots of people, men and women, and in some cases, husband and wife living with their parents, um, this changes the sensibilities of America. So. We've got the hobo sexual revolution and we've got all these people living home with their parents because I'm going to be clear. Those are two distinct and separate things. If you once again, if you're living with your parents, you're not a hobo sexual. You're just a, a failure to lunch, a kid that returned back home. But the hobo sexuals are people who don't have parents or don't have relatives and they got to do what they got to do, you know, because it's about to be winter. The other morning I was out at the office and it was cold. And uh, today I was going somewhere and I had to pass this place twice. And I saw this homeless man on the bench taking a nap in the middle of the day. And I remember, because I never slept on a bench. I had a car and I slept in my car until I wrecked my car. But a few bad decisions that could be me. And I, I realized that a few, well, a, it would take a lot of really, really bad decisions. A lot of bad decisions for me to end up back there. But it is possible if you don't do the right things. And this is one of the reasons that I've launched the corporate game to school you guys on how to start a business correctly because I've been really, really thinking a lot. I've been doing a lot of research, watching a lot of educational content, and I've come up with some thoughts. And one of the big thoughts is this hobosexual, this return home segment of America is going to shape America going into the next 30, 40, 50 years. Because these people are also something that a lot of politicians love. They're voters. And people are going to start voting in their own self-interest. For many, many years, people voted like, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, and they just voted the party line. That's gone. I, I really feel that if the economy tanks the way that I think it is, Joe Biden will be a one-term president. We could have Trump again. That is possible. I know people say, no, no, he, he, he's got all this stuff and he's got all these lawsuits and they're after him. And No, no, don't believe the hype. If Joe Biden runs as a very weak candidate and Trump runs against him, I think Trump will win. And this is <laughs> the crazy America we live in because you know, it's almost Christmas and, you know, I got more videos I'm going to do and that's why I'm not diving into those topics into this one because those are separate standalone videos. But I will mention that I think that when all the numbers come in, this will be the worst Christmas on record in the last 30, 40 years. And that is a signal of the real economy starting to peek through the stimulus economy. 
because the stimulus economy was like a phantom economy. It was like an apparition. It, it, it really wasn't real, but there was real money, there was real activity, and there was real hyperinflated segments like you know, Uber and Lyft and DoorDash. These folks were making crazy money for a short period of time because of all that stimulus money that was in the economy. Now the stimulus money is all about gone. I, I keep hearing there's gonna be like maybe a $1,400 check for people with parents. I'm not 100% sure, I haven't researched that, so I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But winter is here. Winter isn't coming. Winter is here. And there's a lot of people like, I'm gonna think about that guy that I saw sleeping on the bench in the middle of the day and i'm going to wonder where is he what's going on with him because i have seen an increase in homeless like i used to live in sandy springs and i lived in sandy springs for 12 years there were like two homeless people in sandy springs there was this guy and there was this woman the woman clearly had mental issues and this guy i don't know if he had mental issues because he would just stare at you he wouldn't ask for money, he would just stare at you. And he he had his little areas that he would walk and she had her areas where she would hang out. And that was it, those were the two homeless people in Sandy Springs. Of late, I have seen 15 new homeless people. So for 12 years, I used to see two. Now all of a sudden, I've seen 15 recently and that's just the ones I've seen. There's probably many, many more running around. So homelessness is starting to spike across the country. Fully 50% of the homeless people live in California. California has a horrendous homeless problem. Very, very bad. But here in the state of Georgia, homelessness is spiking. The number of people who don't have a place to stay is spiking. And this is what I mean, winter is here. Winter is here. Winter isn't coming. Winter is here. And this winter is going to shape America forever, forever. Because once again, like I grew up, like I said, when I was like, all my friends, we used to be done. I can't wait to leave my parents' house. That was the last thing that we wanted to do was to stay with the parents. Now, hey, yeah, I'm living with my parents. Me too, me too. Yeah, it's good living with the parents. So this is shaping, a, from a social aspect, this is shaping thought patterns and activities which that will be with us for many, many years. This isn't going, nowhere, going, in, going away anytime soon. It is, isn't going away anytime soon. So we have this situation of people, and I wanna say this carefully, I wanna choose my words carefully because I'm talking about a lot of people. I'm talking about more than those 4 million people who quit their job. I think we're talking about 30, 40 million people who are living with their parents as adults. That is a significant number. That is a huge number. And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna choose my words carefully I don't think these people are bums. I think there's some hardworking people. I think there's some people who live with their parents who have two and three and four jobs. So it's a, it's a mixture across the board. Now there are some freeloaders, make no doubt about it. There are some freeloaders. There's someone living with their parents and when mom and dad go to work, they're at home playing PlayStation with their socks on, eating cereal. There are some people who are doing that. And these were people, that's who they were. So that's who they were. And there are some people who are caught in this trap of low income, living with their parents, and they have no clue to what they wanna do. No, no clue to what they wanna do. And they don't understand what they need to do to break free of that trap. Because it is, it's a trap. It is a trap. It is a generational trap. Because in my video where I was wrong about upward mobility, there is so much information. There are so many things you can do, but the average person doesn't have the personal discipline to apply themselves to these endeavors. 
That's why there's only a handful of social media stars like YouTube. I feel that I'm in the top 10% of YouTubers and I only have 107,000 subscribers. And the top 10% of YouTube makes 90% of the YouTube money. So there's like 30 million YouTube channels. I see them, there's new people every day, they're coming out, they have really good production and they just don't have no traction. So one of the things that you have to understand and you have to um, take into account is everyone doesn't have the same opportunities. Once again, like I did that video where I was wrong about you becoming rich. Everyone doesn't have the same opportunities. Everyone doesn't have the same environment. And a lot of these people who are stuck in the living at home with the parents trap, they're gonna be with the parents. What they're gonna do is they're gonna stay in that house until the parents die. And then if the parents have a paid off house, they leave it to the kid. And that's how they're gonna get their first house. That's how they're gonna get their first house. So we have a lot of stuff that's going on. A lot of stuff that's going on. But yeah, the hobo sexual revolution is on and popping. Because once again, just to be clear, if you're living at home with mom and dad, you're not a hobo sexual. But if you are another single adult, living with a single adult that you're not particularly fond of, you are a hobo sexual. Because you need a place to stay. And I don't see this getting better. In 2022, I see this escalating, and I'm gonna tell you why. Once the rates, once the Fed starts messing with the rates and they raise the rates and it becomes more expensive to get a mortgage, that's going to slow the real estate market down, but it's not gonna stop it. And there's not gonna be any crash. You're thinking that you're gonna be able to get, you know, the deals that I saw in 2008, 2009, 2010, that, that's not coming back. That's not coming back because the economic fundamentals that made that possible don't exist in this market. So housing is gonna remain pretty firm. Like I said, you know, if they're asking 430, they may come down to 420. That's that type of action you will see, but you're not gonna see the houses like 500,000. You know, that's what it was worth now. Now it goes down to 250. That happened in 2008, in 2009, 2010. That happened, I know of a house, and if I had been smart, I would have bought that house. This house was in a good neighborhood, and it, it went for the market, and it went to the market for 248. I recently looked up that house, that house is now worth 750. So that, that house really came back. Um, but those kind of deals are not coming, they're not coming. So what we're, we're gonna have is a higher level of inflation. Inflation is not going to stop. Inflation is gonna be a monster next year. I see gas prices going up. I see food prices going up. And this is going to create more stay-at-home people going back home to stay with their parents and more hobosexuals because it's gonna be really, really expensive to live. Really expensive to live. Because, you know, I am just being pretty judicious with my money. And I'm not just making, I'm just not making a whole bunch of stupid purchases. I'm just not blowing money fast. I'm not doing that. Cause once again, like I said, that guy I saw on the bench and I was like, you gotta be careful because in this environment, the way things are going, it's going to be really, really hazardous to be financially foolish. It's gonna be really, really hazardous. And this is one of the reasons that I don't carry virtually no personal debt, none. I really don't carry no personal debt. And one of the reasons I hate bills, I just hate writing a lot of, you know, making a lot of automated payments. But one of the things that you have got to do to weather this storm is to get out of debt. Because I was listening to some YouTube stuff and I did not know that 100 million Americans have a credit score of less than 620. 100 million, there's only 330 million of us. And when you talk about 100 million, 
and then you slice out all of the kids who are not eligible, that's like half of the credit worthy population has a credit score of 620 or under. And that's gonna get worse because what's gonna happen is let's talk about the lower economic strata. And essentially, why are they in the lower economic strata? It's all about skill sets or the lack of skill sets. And they cannot do, like I said, my opinion. And once again, let me know what your opinion of a good job is. But my opinion of a good job is one that pays 125 or more. And I'm gonna tell you why. At 125,000, you can pay your taxes and you can pretty much live really well, enjoy your life and invest and do all those things. That's why I feel it's a good job. But man, 2022 is going to be the rise of the state. I mean, there's going to be more people moving back home with the parents. There's going to be more homosexuals. And like I said, tonight, I'm going to think about that dude that I saw sleeping on that bench because he was clearly homeless. He had that homeless look because, you know, when you see homeless people, you, there's there's a few tears. You'll see them with their buggy and all of their possessions. Or you will see what I like to call the lightweight homeless. All they got is like a backpack and that's it. And his guy, had, he, was, he, he, he was using his backpack as a pillow. And the number of homeless people that we're going to see, we're going to see an explosion of homeless people. An explosion. So with all of this going on, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse before it gets better. Inflation is going to get worse. The price of food is going to get worse. The price of gas is going to get worse before we start to heal. And I'm telling you, man, it is it is um, like 2022 is going to be a monster every year, in my opinion. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully, you know, there's a little snapback, there's a little bounce back. But everything that I see that is trending spells that 2022 is going to be a bad year and 2023 we're going to be into a really rough recession a really rough recession and with this for some people who are enterprising and hardworking, there will be opportunity here's the thing regardless of whether the country is in a recession or not there's always opportunity there's always a way to make money. There's always, that's just how the system is built. If you have something innovative, cause we're gonna have people who are gonna be moving down. They're just gonna be going down, 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 down. And we're gonna have some people who are gonna rise. Like, it, it, it's crazy. Like once again, there, there's so many things I wanna talk about in this video, but they're gonna be standalone topics. So I'm not gonna even mention them cause I wanna keep the videos congruent. I don't wanna be, talking about like 13 or 14 different topics in one video that 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 doesn't that that's just not good but what are your thoughts what do you think is going to happen because i am just looking at the tea leaves and i remember i remember what i can remember from the oil embargo because i was a kid but i do remember that people could only get gas on certain days. Uh, I think it was based upon their license plate number. I'm not 100% sure. And we're going to see some significant events like that in 2022 and 2023. I know it sounds crazy, but the way that I'm looking at it, the way that I'm seeing it, it this, is, this is all gonna come to pass because with the number of people who are living at home with their parents, this is gonna create business models. This is gonna create, like, like I said, this is gonna create business models. I don't know what kind of business models, but some smart people will figure it out and they will make some money from this. Because here's the thing, 30 million people living at home with their parents is a huge demographic. And so if you can make some type of product or service to serve these people, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So, are you a homosexual? Are you living with your parents? Are you, and he, here's the bad thing about it. If you're living with your parents and you're not making much money and you're 35, 
This is going to impact you when you're 45 and 55 and 65. That's the bad thing. Because you could be in this low wage spiral for the next 30 to 40 years. And then you get to the point where you can't work anymore. It's a wrap. It's, 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 it's over. So one of the things that you need to be doing is to figure out a way to increase your income and to get out of debt. These are th like, once again, we're going to have a recession. We're going to have all this bad stuff happen, but the most well-qualified people with great credit scores will still get credit. There will be people still getting business loans. There will be people still getting lines of credit. There, that ain't going away, but you're going to have to be extremely well qualified to get that. And they will be on the table for you. But like, once again, the homosexuals, they're going to be taken over. So if you are a single man or a single woman living on your own, doing well, you are a target. <laughs> you are a target. I had four chicks try to move in with me. Four. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want a roommate. I don't want a roommate. So one of the things that you should understand is this moment in America, this, 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 this snip in America, right, is going to cast a die for a certain segment of America for the next 30, 40 years. And what's like the Waltons, going back to the Waltons, you're going to have people who are living with mom and dad. They're going to get into a romantic relationship. They're going to get married. That person's going to move in with mom and dad, and then they're going to have little kids. And it's going to be three generations of the family living under one roof. That is going to become a norm in America. That's something that literally disappeared. It's, it's, it's making the comeback. It's making the comeback. So you're going to see all these people. And once again, you're going to see the sharing of cell phone plans. You're going to see the sharing of, of Netflix. You know, mom's going to get Netflix and then everyone else is going to use mom's Netflix account. You're going to see the sharing of phone plans. You're going, you're going to see economic conservatism gone on, on steroids. And why are you going to see this? Because people are going to have to live like that. They're going to have to live like that to make it. Because, like I said, I'm going to do a whole nother video about this. But this is going to be the worst Christmas on record in 30, 40 years. You want to know why? Because people don't have money. Now, I was on the highway today and traffic is stupid, which tells me a whole bunch of people are getting out of town. They're going where they're going for Christmas. And it is what it is. It is what it is. But I'm here to tell you that um, the homosexual, the stay at home, let's call it moving back in with the parents movement is going to be substantially huge. And this is not something that's going to disappear in 2022 or 2023 or even 2025. This is going to become a staple of American life. This is going to become a norm. Like you meet someone at a, at a party or someone, you, you like her and she like you. And you're just like, hey, I live with my parents. And she's like, so do I. <laughs> That's what's going to be happening. So it's not going to be so strange. It's like, oh, OK, well, you know, I'm in the basement and I got my own entrance. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm in my old room. I guess we'll have to do it at your place. Th those are going to be real conversations. Those are going to be real conversations because you're going to because there's going to be so many people in that age range who are doing it that it will not seem abnormal. It will not seem strange. This, everyone's just doing the same thing. So once again, be sure to try to subscribe to the corporate game. That's what I'm gonna teach you other sub corporations. And also I'm kind of taking a break with training and I'm gonna start it in 2022. So there's gonna be a ton of training across all channels. So be on the lookout for that. But subscribe to the corporate game if you wanna learn how to set up and run a real business. Okay, all right, cause I got you. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments and uh, I will see you in the next one.